Good day collectors and viewers, Social Distance Warrior is back with video number 17. Today we're going to look at another character from the original Star Wars movie from 1977, A New Hope. Uh, today we're going to look at the Tusken Raider. The Tusken Raider, formerly and I guess, I guess currently known as Sand People as well. We used to just call them Sand People. Very mysterious name, you know, at the time was a very awesome, a scary looking character as a kid. I used to be, you know, horrified when they go on Tatooine and they went really quiet and the Tusken Raiders showed up. I was really terrified, wondering who they were. But at the same time, I really, really wanted to have the toy because it was very mysterious. That whole look with the Jawas and the sand crawler and Tusken Raiders and Land Speeder. I loved that whole, you know, look of, of A New Hope, definitely on Tatooine. So Tusken Raider made his debut in 1978 on the part of the 12 back original figures uh that's him right here uh he does come with his own you know plastic cape a lot of you know characters had you know the capes or you know the cloth outfits that were translated into plastic and he has you know his standard articulation there you know the legs the arms five points legs arms head uh, he came with a Gaddafi stick as well which i don't have with my original one here um this original figure here did have a couple different styles there's this one here and then there was also one uh, with the tubes uh, open tubes instead of the closed tubes and that was a little bit more rare than this one is here but you know that whole look the capture of that look for that figure from the original Star Wars movie was awesome it's always a desirable figure for me as a kid you know I always dreamed that I have army builders of these things I don't have them but you know having one I guess to reminisce on is is better than nothing in this respect so uh, that's 1978 and of course he'd be available through the original star wars movie and then through empire strikes back and return of the jedi on those card backs so you know 78 all the way up to uh, 1985 and then obviously star wars went dormant we wouldn't see any star wars stuff because there was no more movies until the line relaunched so this time in power of the force too so in 1996, so in that second wave, in the second year of Power of the Force 2, we finally got an updated new Tusken Raider. That's this guy over here. And just like a lot of figures at the time, a little bit more of a dynamic pose and a little bit more, um, I guess you can say, built. Uh, he's not too bad. His arms are a little bit thick, but he's not too bad. The sculpt is really nice. I don't know why this hand, you know, is closed. But if you position, you know, you know your Gaderfi stick really well, you can have it where... He's kind of holding it on a bit of an angle and then put that, you know, the other rest of the other part in his palm of the hand over here. And you get a bit of an action pose on there. And it's nice, you know, this part here is removable. So you can see underneath there. If you look at it, he's like a mummy. You know, he's got all mummy wrappings underneath. I thought that was cool because you could technically take this off and have a different Tuscan Raider figure because the sleeves do match the color here, which is nice. And then to show you on there as well, uh, he does have articulation there at the waist. And this kind of impedes it, keeping the this part on, but you can turn him a little bit. And then, you know, head turns, you know, arms do up and down, uh, legs as well. So articulation in the figure, and that's the one that we got as Power of the Force 2. And, you know, he'd be available for that first run, first release, and a couple years later in 1998, we get another one. Now, they did something really cool in 98. They gave us a couple, uh, like deluxe sets, creature packs. And there was one with Luke Skywalker in his, uh, you know, black Jedi Knight outfit from Return of the Jedi. And he came with a bone where he can fight a Rancor. And the Rancor had, came with real feel skin. And they did the same thing with the Tusken Raider. So there was a set like this one here with a Tusken Raider. And you got this guy here, and he came with a bantha, which I'll show you in a second over here. Uh, he's got the bottom part of his outfit here is cloth goods, which is nice. The arms are almost exactly the same sculpt as the other figure. They made it a brighter brown paint job over here. Same thing with the head, a little bit more of a brighter, nicer look. The eyes are nice and, you know, dark, black dots inside there. Uh, we turn around, you can see what he looks like, you know, from the back too, with the cloth goods. Now, what's really neat here, let's just pull him off the stand for a second. We actually got some articulation on this figure. So in 1998, when articulation was unheard of, we have, you know, the legs moving up and down. Uh, there is a swivel just above the knee there. So you can position him on that bantha sitting on its back. And then articulation at the knees as well. So the knees go up. So we have articulated knee 
Tuscan Raider. So he can sit on the back of that um, mount to his. And let's bring that Bantha in over here. Get him into the camera. Okay, we may have to move a few figures back. Give me one second just to get these guys out of the way. And we can kind of position them here so we get them in the camera. So, uh, as the Rancor had the real fuel skin, this one had like real fuel fur. And you could, you know, put your finger through the packaging. I remember seeing these in the store for the first time. And I grabbed both of them and I came home. And I was in my early 20s, probably when 2021 at the time. And I remember coming home with these things in a bag. And my dad thought I was crazy. What's this guy doing buying toys? And uh, I just was so happy to be able to reminisce and you know collect star wars again as a lot of people did and every opportunity that i got i picked stuff up it made me happy and we finally got a bantha we never had something like this and you can see he's got his mount here on the back and you can put that tuscan raider you can sit him up over here he's got fur running all around the, and you can see this thing stood the test of time it's over 20 years old uh, he's got a tail as well, and there's plastic underneath, but the fur running on top, and you can see the little sacks here on the side. And then, you know, if you go over to the front, you can see his eyes are there, right? You can still, you can see his eyes, you can see his mouth, so just like in the movie, you can kind of make out something. And then these tusks on top, they have some articulation, so you can turn them to the side or back, which is really neat. They gave us some articulation on there. Uh, the legs are articulated as well, so you can move them back and forth. But just an amazing figure. And, of course, he'd get re-released just like the Tusken Raiders would um, later on in the line. You know, in the deluxe pack, like battle pack, this sort of thing. But that's the Tusken Raider in a nutshell with uh, Bantha, which is such a nice figure. And, you know, a standing little uh, part of my collection for sure. So, uh, next figure we get after that. That was in 98. In 2000, Power of the Jedi line. So, just after Episode 1 came out, we found out. They went back to Tatooine, and then during that pod race scene, we see uh, Tusken Raiders, you know, up in the mountains, and they're shooting at the pod racers, and they actually kill one of them. And so this next figure is inspired by that scene. So we get a Tusken Raider Power of the Jedi line in 2000. That's this one here. A uh, little bit of a lighter paint job, more realistic. Again, he fits in easily as a classic figure or as a prequel figure whichever one you want like he has that look they didn't change anything on the look which is nice he comes with a nice long rifle which is nice we get that finally with the tuscan and you know he's intended to shoot those pod racers you know from the outskirts of um that pod race so articulation on this guy you know there is a, he does have a skirt there it does have a slit so you can move the legs but you know there's only so much you can do with it because this is long and it's thick plastic he turns at the waist, so you have that there. Uh, let's just pull his rifle out for one second. So you can pose him really nicely with the rifle. He does have swivel on the elbow, on that elbow there, so you can straighten his arm out. You can go up and down. You can do the little chant, you know, where he's, you know, chanting victory, right? <laughs> if you wanted to, you have that option too, which is cool. And, of course, they can, you know, you can turn them at the wrists, which is nice as well. So that Tuscan Raider, that's the one that we got as part of the, um, Power of the Jedi line in 2000. So, inspired by episode one. Next one we get, 2002, Star Wars Saga. Uh, as part of Attack of the Clones, Anakin comes back to Tatooine because he keeps having nightmares about his mom. And he goes to back to Tatooine and finds out they were captured by Tusken Raiders. And then he goes to the Tusken Raider camp and then he slaughters all the Tusken Raiders. So when he goes to that Tusken Raider camp, we actually see that they're not just Tusken Raiders. There's also Tusken female and kids. And they made a figure of that, which is really neat. That's this one over here. So this is the Tusken female and you can see her look. Uh, reminiscent of the Tusken as well, but a little bit different. And the eye pattern over here, the mask, the setup. Uh, she does come with that Yadefi stick as well. And she has... You know, a backpack on here, on the back that she carries the kid in. There's an infant, Tuscan infant inside the back there. And she came with that figure as well. And there's articulation on that figure too. I miss this sort of stuff. We don't see much of this anymore as accessories. Uh, you can't do anything with the legs, but the arms move up and down. And it is a brand new figure. And again, she'd get re-released in the battle pack uh, a few years later as well. And, you know, they, all they would do is alter the paint job a little bit. But that's the figure there. And you can see that's the kid. And the kid has that same, you know kind of, you know, eyepiece as the mom does when they're small. And you can fit them right in the back there. And you have a nice little 
Tuscan female for your collection. So that was 2002. And then, you know, that whole Star Wars saga line for Attack of the Clones had a lot of uh, action features. So we'd also get in 2003, we'd move one year uh, later, we get a regular Tuscan Raider, and they came with these really cool, here's another thing I miss, I love these bases that they come on. They came with these bases, and it's got, like, you know, the fire pit over here, it's in red, it's, you know, translucent underneath here, and looks like he's standing by the, by his camp, and he's pre-posed. So again, he, he has some movement in that arm, you can also move the arm up and down, you can turn him at the wrist there, same thing on both sides. Uh, this one also has, you know, a swivel at the elbows, like this guy does here. But one neat feature on this figure is they gave us an action feature on the head. So when Anakin came to save his mom and they he found out she dies in his arms, he gets really angry and he decides to slaughter all the Tuscans. So he comes out of that tent and if you remember, he decapitates the two that are standing right outside the tent. So this guy's got that feature, his head is on a magnet, we can pull the magnet, you know, the head off. And you can, you know, do that scene where they get decapitated like everybody else did in Star Wars. If it wasn't hands or arms, it was heads. <laughs> so heads will roll, and Tuscan is no exception. It doesn't get off the off the map for this one. So we can put that head back on. It's just on a magnet, which is really cool. And, of course, it doesn't change the aesthetic, the look of the figure. It doesn't even look like the head's removable until you pull it off. So they did a fantastic job on this figure. He's still a favorite of mine. I love the paint job on him. I love how he's a little bit, you know... Got a little bit of a darker brown and then a lighter, like an opaque brown over here. And you can see the one from episode one's got, you know, different looks. So you stand them all together. It's a nice change. There's a lot of uh, color variance between your Tuscan Raiders. So that's 2003. Okay. And then we get an ultimate version of the Tuscan Raiders. So this time in 2000, uh, in the part of the vintage collection, 2006. I was going to say 2004, but I don't think he was part of that initial wave. We get a Tuscan Raider Vintage Original Trilogy Collection one. And that's him on the card back there. So they made these figures reminiscent to that original card back. Let's just bring them into the picture here. And you can see, you know, he comes with a cloth robe standing over him. He comes with his rifle. He comes with his Gaddafi stick in there as well. And if we turn this guy over to the back, you can see it shows you like the original figure right there right and uh what he looked like on his card back and then of course the other ones that were available in the line in this case the other ones in the line were the x-wing luke the tuscan greedo uh biker scout scout trooper and then you know, han solo endor outfit so there was five of them in 06 and then they also had a special offer ultimate galactic hunt that you could uh get george lucas and stormtrooper disguise on a card back which you know i picked up as well that was, that was a really nice addition again i missed those mail aways you know, Hasbro, if you're listening, give us mail -aways. We love that sort of stuff. We'll make it available to everybody in many countries, not just in the States. And I have him here in loose form as well. So that's this guy over here. You can see he comes with those cloth goods. He does come with the rifle and that Gaddafi stick. And then his um, cloth, you know, outfit sits over top of him there. It's a nice material. Um, it's a little bit big. A lot of stuff was at the time, but, you know, if you can pose it, a certain way you can get it where it's not hanging out too far on him. Uh, we can take that, you know, Gaddafi stick out of his hand for a second. I want to pull off this robe just to show you what he looks like underneath. So that just comes right off over his arms. You know, he does have the ball joint at the shoulders over here, so you can move them up and down all around. At the elbows, it's swivel. It's not, you know, ball joint there too. And then it's swivel at the wrists as well on both sides. Uh, nice paint job there with his bandolier running across the front and the back. The head is really cool as well. The head's on a ball joint. So you can move it a little bit up and down, you know, side to side there. Underneath the, this part here, so this part is stationary on there, the bottom part of his um, of his robe. It's fabric. Underneath there, you know, you can articulation at the, at the top of the legs there. And then, of course, you know, ball joint at the knees. You can bend his knees, and then you can move him at the ankles as well down here. I have him sitting with some sticky tack on a stand so he won't fall off. Uh, you can also turn him at the waist back and forth. Uh, and that's the look of the Tuscan Raider outside of the outfit. Again, perfect figure. Like, I love this figure. This figure is great. I'm not sure how much better they could do. Maybe if they just made the arms where he had the articulated elbows as well instead of just the swivel ones. That would probably be the only thing that I would change on this guy. 
uh, and then of course release them again, give them to us again on the card so we have another version of that Tuscan sand people. Uh, and then of course you can put the you know cloth tunic back on him there. Let's slip that back on just so we can have him dressed. He's not sitting here. He doesn't, we don't want him to catch a cold. Okay. Yeah, this arm's going to be a little more challenging to get in. Just because that's a little bit tight. Okay. Mr. Tuscan Raider. Okay, I don't think it's going to get any better than that right now. Let's just position him back there. So that's Tuscan Raider. Vintage Original Trilogy Collection, 2006, and he'd see another release again in those battle packs that came with the Banthas, and they'd make him in a couple more color variations. And then we'd see him again in the 3 3 quarter inch Black Series line. It was a Walmart exclusive. He got released there. So they've released him a couple times. It'd be nice to get him back on that vintage card as well. Uh, I'd add him to my collection again as for sure, especially if they gave us articulated elbows. So we'd see the... Um, there's a pet that came with one of the Tuscan Raiders. So when Anakin went to visit them in Attack of the Clones to save his mom, when he came out of the hut, there was they had pets. They had these dogs. They're called Mossifs. These guys here. And so they made this figure, and he's really neat. He's got a chain here, and he comes with you know the arm brace that you can attach it to your you know Tuscan Raider. And you can have it like he's walking him, right? He does have no articulation on the legs. But he does have it on the jaw, which is neat. I mean, he was an additional accessory, so he came with the figure. He's not a figure on his own, but he could pass as one. And you can see the straps actually go through his spikes here. They did a really good job there. They didn't take anything away from the look of that character. Now, this Masif, this pet, uh, I, it came with a Genosian. So when he first came out, he came with the Genosian. So before the movie came out, I thought, okay, it's going to be part of, you know, those Genosian flying creatures. But then when we saw the movie, he was with the Tusken Raiders. So I think there was a little bit of miscommunication there with Hasbro when it first started. And of course, they'd correct it afterwards once they, they re we released him with another paint job of this Tusken here. And he came with the Masif. So I thought that was an interesting story. But he's definitely part of your, any diorama you do with the Tuskens, you have him there. We'd also get a Black Series 6-inch, you know, definitive version of the Tusken, which is awesome. I have him here too. That's this guy here, and he's got his, you know, cloth robe, and he's got everything going for him. So he came with this, you know, his Gaderfi stick, and you could change these attachments on the bottom. He came with, like, three different attachments. I'll show you those in a sec. Uh, so this part here is cloth on the outside. He's got full articulation. Unfortunately, what I like about the 3 3 quarter inch one is this part is cloth on 3 3 quarter inch one, so you can sit him. You can have him sitting on the, you know, Bantha if you had to. You can have him sitting down. You can't do that with this guy. You can only stand him. So it would be nice if they made him with this part cloth. And underneath there, you can see articulation. Now, what he's got going for him, he's got the ball joint at the hips as well. He does move at the, the legs, got a little slit there, so you can slide them back and forth right at the thigh. And, of course, knee articulation, ankle articulation. The night wrappings are really, really nice on that character. And you can see all the way around look-wise. Now, I just want to, I don't want to take off the tunic to kind of, spend too much time here but i wanted to show you that this guy does have you know articulation swivel at that elbow so all they have to do and then of course at the wrist and at the at the shoulder all they have to do is take this guy and give him to us in three three quarter inch form he's a perfect figure like the eyes are awesome even more exaggerated you know on the eyes there on a ball joint too which is nice and that breathing apparatus is a separate piece it's uh, sculpted on there but it's separate so it really gives it a nice uh, look to it and then he's got his belt on here and that's what he looks like from the back. And then if I lift this up to kind of see any more detail, you can see that the bandolier strap runs on the back, as is the belt. So they went out, all out on features on this guy here. So he came out in the on the Black Series 6-inch um, line in a separate card. And then with the 40th anniversary of Star Wars, we got him on a card back as well in that 6-inch line. I'll just bring that over to show you. And here's what I was talking about where he came with the other attachments for his staff. So you can change what you want to have on the staff there. You can put, you know, this one here, or you can put this one here, or you can put this one here. You can army build, and of course, rifle, and there's the other part of the staff there in the back. So really nice on that card back. Really nice to see this in the store. It really brought back memories. I had to pick it up, impulse buy. And then, of course, if we look at it on the back here, I'm not sure if I can get some more space. 
yeah, it's not really going to fit in the camera. You can see the other characters that are in the picture there as well that were available. And that's Tuscan Raider that we got, part of the 40th anniversary in 2017. So that's it for the Tuscan Raider, you know, slash Sand People. That's all the ones that I have that, that were released. Again, they released some of them multiple times in different paint jobs. But again, another favorite character of mine. And you, again, you see him, you know it's Star Wars. The more obscure, the better. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. And I look forward to making more videos. Take care.